Welcome back guys, it's Freshwater Joe and I'm hitting you up with another episode on OGT Aquatics TV and as you can tell I'm downstairs so I think you guys know what day it is. It is Two Minute Tuesday and we're coming back to the inverse system again and talking to you about little fish that is super super colorful. So let's dive into this with Allie. Let's go. This is the biggest man I've ever seen. All right. All right. What's happening today, Allie? Today we are talking mandarins, my favorite, and I think a lot of people's favorites. Kind of why a lot of people get into the hobby in the first place, because mandarins are just awesome and they're beautiful, but they're not for everybody. They're definitely not a beginner fish. So um, unfortunately, a lot of people go into it thinking they can just put a mandarin in any tank and it'll look beautiful and that's fine. But unfortunately, they're definitely not a beginner fish. They're definitely more closer to the expert level fish. Um, they need a tank that's, I would say, a minimum of 65 gallons with a sump. Um, honestly, with these fish, you really you need to have a sump because you need to have a refugium, a place to grow copepods, because that is all mandarins eat is copepods. Even if you get them to eat frozen, it's just not enough. You know, frozen is great, and it's good that they're eating that, but they need to have pods too to supplement their diet. That is their main diet, and without that, they're just not going to be healthy. And they need to eat all day long, and unless you're feeding constantly, they're just not going to be happy. So they need to have those pods to keep them held over throughout the day. I have a mandarin in my 120, and he lives 100% off pods. I've had him for two years, and he's never eaten a drop of frozen or pellet food. So um, it, sometimes you can't ever get them to eat frozen. If they're not eating frozen or anything, they need lots of pods. So big tank with a big sump with a refugium is the way to go with these guys. There's two types of mandarins that you usually see in the aquarium industry. There's the uh, psychedelic mandarins, which are the ones that are your most known mandarins. Those are the ones with the red and the green. There's usually reds and then there's greens. The reds just have a lot more red prominent color on them and the greens, of course, are more green. Um, then you also have the target mandarins or also bullseye mandarins or spotted mandarins. So they go by a few different names. Um, but those are the ones with the really cool bullseye markings on them. And the cool thing about the target mandarins is that they're actually easier to get to eat frozen. If you're looking for one that will also eat frozen food, they usually will pick up on it faster than the other mandarins will. That's it. Okay. <laughs> Woo! So usually you can keep mandarins in a regular reef tank. They are definitely reef safe. Um, they are very slow moving fish though, so they can also be with seahorses. So some people keep them with seahorses. Again, as long as you have that refugium with a sump and a lot of live rock, then they should do well. And as long as it's a big enough tank. All right, so you can keep them with other friendly fish. Uh, usually community reef tank fish are usually perfect for these guys. They definitely wouldn't do well in a fowler tank with aggressive fish. They are slow moving, they're friendly, they're very passive, and they don't do well with any aggressive fish. But these guys are awesome. So a little cool fun fact about these guys too is they're not usually prone to predation in, in any tank because they actually excrete a very toxic slime off their body. Their, their slime coat is really toxic and uh, it usually is their way of keeping fish and other predators away from them. So usually if a fish does try to bother them, it, they only do it once and they won't do it again. Um, it's not enough to necessarily kill a fish, but it definitely will tell them to stay away from them. And also those bright colors, just like in the rainforest with your dart frogs and anything that's venomous or, or poisonous rather, um, it just tells other fish to stay away from them. It's really cool. There's a couple things to look for when you're buying your mandarin. So a healthy mandarin should be picking all the time. He should be constantly like pecking at the sand bed, at the glass, at the rocks constantly eating. That's a sign of a healthy mandarin. Also too, you want to make sure you don't see much of a spine. You shouldn't be able to see their spine protruding from the sides. A teeny bit might just be because they just came in. Sometimes they come in a tiny bit on the skinnier side and they just need time to fatten up. Um, but once you've had them, if you start to see your, your mandarin spine really prominent, that's not a good sign because it's not eating enough. So the way to tell the difference between a male and female mandarin is pretty obvious once you see. Uh, males especially psychedelics, they have a really tall um, dorsal fin on the top. So those are the males. The females have a very just regular little dorsal fin. And then on the target mandarins, theirs is a lot smaller, but you'll still be able to tell the difference. We'll actually show you in this clip right now how you can see the difference between the males, how it's a little bit pointier on the top, and then the females is just very straight across. Thanks for joining us for our Two Minute Tuesday, and we're heading out of here. Come check out all of our awesome mandarins and everything else that's awesome. Keep on reefing, baby. Woo!